Uh, I want to start you guys out with a fun scenario, and mm. you could tell me whether you like this or whether you don't like this, because I was looking through all the different playoff possibilities for the Vikings, and in some of them, Week 17 really matters. It matters to if the Rams were to win two out of three and the Vikings lose two out of three, the Rams have the tiebreaker. So you would go into, or I guess you would go into that final week needing to get a win there to make sure you keep the Rams one game behind you. And I'm going to make this case. I want to see it happen. I want to see the Vikings in week 17 have to win a game here against the Chicago Bears that matters. And I will tell you why, and you guys can tell me if I'm crazy. The reason why is because Kirk Cousins has not been tested that many times this year. And when he has, they have lost games against good teams. Now, there are other times, came back from 20 points, deserves credit for that. Beat Dallas on national TV. They're kind of bad, but still deserves credit for that. But last year, went into week 17, and it was the last taste in everyone's mouth. Him falling apart, him doing the thing on the sideline, going nuts with Adam Thielen. I would love to see Cousins have that opportunity in week 17 to exercise the demon against a great defense with the playoffs on the line and in a way prove to himself and the rest of the team that he can win a game with everything on the line right before they go to the playoffs. Crazy, not crazy. You start, Alex. You're crazy. I think you're crazy. You, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that you don't, you're not believing in Kirk and you're like, listen, I want to see one more game, dude. You're that guy. First of all, you are officially that guy. <laughs> I haven't seen enough. I need to see more. Okay, dude, listen, we've showed it to you. We even showed you when Dalvin's not there, what do we do? Well, we speed it up and we let Kirk move around. And that's how we like to play the game. I'm telling you that if they go into the Bears game needing a win and they put it on Kirk's back, he'll get it done. All right. Tell you what, what do you think, Courtney? Crazy? Well, I want... <laughs> I agree with Alex in the sense that there's always going to be these truthers that think, what, just one more, just one more. And you see one more game. You need to see him in this situation. I need to see him on grass when it's 56 <laughs> degrees out and the humidity yes. is 45% <laughs> uh, with a light and mist in the air. There's always going to be that sort of naysayer, naysay mentality to try to justify what is he going to need to do to earn the next big contract. Um, personally, if you are a Vikings fan, I would say don't put anything on Kirk's shoulders against the Chicago team. This team has had his number since he's been here the entire time. He's 0-3 against his team. And also, I pulled up uh, the the box score from last year's game, the 24-10 final, where the Bears had literally nothing to play for. They yep. were already in the playoffs. Full and starter um, second half. Khalil Mack was in the game. Leonard Floyd was in the game. Everybody And they kept them in in the second half, which I thought was interesting. But I think back to that fourth quarter drive. That lasted nine minutes, 15, 16 plays, 75 yards. And what that did to the Vikings defense, given the uncertainty with this defense right now, I don't think you want this game to mean anything because if they have to pull it out, if somehow Kirk falters, let's look back at what happened in that game in that fourth quarter, because that was a deciding drive because it was a 13, 10 game at halftime and that blew it right open. OK, so don't misunderstand me being the person who doesn't know about Kirk until the next week. And then I decide no, I'm, I I'm not being that person. What I'm trying to get at, though, is for himself and for the rest of the team uh, to, to have week 17 be a game where Kirk Cousins could go against a very good Chicago defense, not as good as it was last year, but it certainly looked good in week four against him. And to have all the stakes on that game for them to be in the playoffs, to come out with a win, I think would mean something to how they could perform in the playoffs with the belief that he can actually do it. And now I, I would say for most quarterbacks, they would have a playoff win of his caliber, or, or they would have a lot of games where we would say, well, he was big in that game, even if he lost that one. But you go year to year, 2015, they get in the playoffs, they get a double digit lead, they blow it, they lose. Kirk Cousins plays very poorly. 2016, they can get in the playoffs, final game of the season. Guess what? They don't. 2017, there's a couple of games there where he needs to play well and keep them in the playoff race. He doesn't. And then last year, a complete meltdown on the final day of the season. He has so much history with this, with falling apart. I think it would be great to see him have stakes for week 17. And then, you know what? It would mean a little something to me if I'm the team and I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to stick with him long term. Because if every time he's good, he doesn't get over that hump, 
well, then what are we doing here with this much money going to be poured into this guy? Well, wouldn't you look at it as the week before, meaning all that much more? Like, because that could be the division on the line, theoretically, in week 16 with Green Bay. Like, if he goes out and beats Green Bay, they take care of business at home, and they're in a position now, potentially, I was messing around with the uh, playoff machine last night, potentially in a position to get the third seed that day. Like that to me would mean more than a, a week 17 game where it's backs against the wall because there's going to be a lot of room to blame a lot of different people if something goes wrong, not necessarily putting that all on Kirk in week 17. Agreed. I think that's fair. And I, here's my question. Say he goes out on Monday night and beats Green Bay. Is everyone going to get off his back a little bit more? I think they, so. Okay. I think so. Absolutely. Because just of what the implications, Alex, of what's on the line there right. for the playoffs. And I shoot. You're right. And, and that's going to be like a whole team has to understand. There are a ton. Like home field to start the playoffs is huge. And then however you have to go in from there, yeah, that sucks. But to have that game at home. At least, I mean, dude, that is huge, huge momentum for a team like this. So, so you guys are saying that you don't care whether Week 17 has stakes on it or not. I, I mean, I, I could see from a fan standpoint where you would say, well, of course I don't want it to. I want them to right. be able you to play to Sean Mannion yeah. and, and start Mike Boone and not right. watch that game and just worry about my turkey dinner that I'm cooking for uh, whatever, post-Christmas meal or something, right? Um, I, I could understand that that viewpoint. I think from, I mean, maybe it's part of me just enjoying fun and drama that it would be great to be able to build up that game and talk about that game as it matters. But I also think any time that Kirk Cousins can have one of these games where it matters and it's meaningful, that it gets to go into the sample size of how you feel about him. And uh, whether it's just, well, we've set him up with a nice system and a lot to work with because if you were going to pay every quarterback the same, then you would want Kirk Cousins. It's great, but you're going to have to pay him like $40 million a year. So then you see Ryan Tannehill step into a really good situation. All of a sudden he performs really well. And you see Jimmy Garoppolo and you see Jared Goff fall off when his situation isn't as good. And, and so you're trying to decide, is this a guy who can really get us over the, the top? I want that sample size to increase. I also just think if you're a fan of football, you don't, you don't want to watch a game that doesn't matter. You want that thing to be dramatic and you want your team to come out with it. And if you don't believe in your team, that's another part of this whole scenario that I'm laying out is how much do you believe in them? How right. much do you believe in, in in Kirk? Because if you say, oh, I, I wouldn't want week 17 to matter. Gosh, no. I mean, everybody else fall apart, please. Then you're saying, well, I don't really buy into this team. Well, if you can get him a week ahead of schedule, essentially, and have him win that week 16 game against Green Bay, to me, the stakes are even higher because right. that is the division right there. Yeah. Like that has the possibility of helping them, you know, not have to go to Green Bay in the first round to play a playoff game. Like that's huge. And, and to me, that matters more. Like he has two opportunities here. Like you're pointing out, like if week 17 does matter, um, that's it in its own right. And also it does matter in the sense that he can't be 0-4 against the Bears, regardless of whether this team is already clinched at that point. I don't know what the scenario particularly looks like, but if it is a possibility, you can't be 0-4 against the same team that has had so many misnomers happen to them this year. Like, you know, you can't go and beat beat Dallas. You can't, um, I don't know, you can't be, I would say it would mean just as much, if not more, beating Green Bay than a lackluster Chicago team that's going to try to be playing spoiler at that point because if they're, they could be out of it this weekend. If the Vikings beat the Chargers and the Bears lose and the Bears are playing the Packers mm -hmm. in Lambeau, and Chicago's out, and they're going to be trying to play spoiler, and they're going to be right. trying to ruin Kirk Cousins' day like yeah, they have try. for the last two years. Yeah, they'll try. But I just – I don't know. I mean, you could have two opportunities for two games. Like, let's not overlook Los Angeles, by the way. Like, yeah, you said to me on Sunday not. that you have some weird thoughts about this. Yeah. Um, and Someone's I missing a field goal at the end. I just don't know who. Ooh, <sighs> yeah, but – um, predicted it. It's just <laughs> – to me, with this Green Bay game, there's so much more at stake that could ever possibly be with that Week 17 game. Well, unless it's for the unless entire playoffs, is which is what I want. That's what I'm saying. Uh, well, so and you, you, you're, might you get just, you you want, just can't get on board. Yeah, I think you're going to get what you want because the Rams have been playing really well. They're going to make a push for it now. And not only that, but you look at what happened this last week with the Niners falling all the way to five, but then jumping back up to one. Like Teams are starting to catch their momentum. And teams are starting to fall back, and then they're catching it like Seattle. To me, Seattle's a great team, but, man, if you catch them on an off week, they don't look good at all. They just look really lackluster and – Wow, they look very beatable. But when they're hot, they're hot. Then you have teams like 
uh, San Fran that are just playing really, really good football. And uh, the Saints that are playing really, really good football. And the Vikings that are playing really, really good football. To me, those are the teams that you need to watch out for. They play good every single week. They're not hot one week and then the next week they're like, oh, my God, we got a football game. Totally forgot about this, guys. <laughs> that to me, like when you look at that Seattle game versus the Rams, you're like, dude, what, 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 what was that? Wait, who is Jared Goff? I thought we were writing this guy off. Now he's back? Like, way to let Seattle has has trounced the number one team and then come back and let a team that's kind of in the hunt kind of not trounce them. Like, it's, dude, you can't play like that in this league. And that's what's going to make these teams that are kind of in the hunt, they're going to make them really hot and hungry. And like you said with Chicago, whether they're in it or not, they hate Minnesota, so yes. they're going to play them tough. doesn't matter if their backups are in or if the coaches are on the field. They, for some reason – hate the Vikings. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but when I played them and I was here, it was like, dude, we hate you guys a lot. I was like, why? I don't know. We just hate you. It was like, all right, well, let's go then. It's, it's They're <laughs> going to be tough week 17. I would be prepared, but like you guys said, do not overlook Phillip Rivers. Um, all right, so let's uh, look at this NFC playoff picture right now and talk about who you don't want to face because right now, the Vikings are set to, if things stayed the way they are, Set to go New to Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. Yes. I'm all for that personally. I'd rather go there Ooh, than Green exactly. Bay. That's a personal thing. Yeah. Well, it'd be a great little trip for us, but I don't think it would be a great trip necessarily for the Vikings. So th there are still all sorts of possibilities for who they could play. They could still end up with San Francisco. I think they're 11 and two, but if they lost a couple of games here um, and they face the Rams, so that's always a possibility too. So almost anything could change. Let's even include... Can we include the Rams even in this conversation for who they could play? Probably not. I don't think they could get to that point. But if we're talking about San Francisco, Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, and Dallas is the obvious one you would want to play. Oh, but yeah. between those other four, Alex, who would you most and least want the Vikings to play against? I mean, I want them to mostly play the Green Bay. I think that the Green Bay game up there in Lambeau I, – I, I get like I we we mess around a lot. Like you say he's washed and I say he's not. He's another team. They're up and down too much. You you can't do that. And he knows that. That's why he's so frustrated. He's like, listen, guys, we gotta hit a smooth trajectory here. If we keep going up and then taking steps back and then going up and taking steps, we've gone nowhere essentially. We've just stayed in place. So you go up in Lambeau, yeah, it's going to be cold, but I, I want to play there. The last place I'd probably want to play would be San Fran. I think that that's a team that's really hot that people don't – they kind of overlook. Um, obviously, the Seattle game was close. We saw that. That could have been a lot closer. Um, but it's the Saints, too, that's another place. I, I've never wanted to go down there like, yo, I want to play this game down here for the playoffs, for everything. Like, That's a tough place to play. If you're talking about I, I can pick and choose, I want to go to Green Bay. I don't want to go to New Orleans or San Fran. If I had the option, if Seattle was somehow – that somehow worked, because they could technically still win the yeah, NFC could, North. Yeah. Um, excuse me, the NFC West. Like, Kyle Rudolph said it. He's like, we could be back here in a month. And I think that they realized how close they were had they not had three fumbles in that game, had Kirk not had a single read on fourth and three on the final play, had the defense not stunk. Like, right. they had a chance to win that game, and that was – they were that was within the Had they grasp. not done everything wrong, they <laughs> had they played run. good exactly. football, they would have won. Right. It's, so, it's I, so hard. I know. Um, I'd say Seattle and Green Bay. Green Bay is vulnerable at this point in the season. And I know we talk about December football. Like that's when you should be playing your best football. I don't know if I can really say that about the Packers. I think they're just ha they're um beneficiaries of playing a really bad schedule, of playing a last place schedule in the month of December that's gonna set them up potentially for that two seed. But I just – this team has not had good luck in New Orleans previously. I don't know if anybody remembers the 2009 NFC Championship, but, like, that is a hard place to play. I don't want to go against Drew Brees in the playoffs. Um, outside of those final six quarters uh, of the 2017 season, or, you know, really looking at those final six quarters of the 2017 season and what they did in the second half with the Saints and letting Brees come back, like, that's stuff yep. that's probably going to happen from the jump this year. They are really, really good. Um, much better than that 2017 team. So, I mean, I would not want to go to New Orleans if I'm the Vikings. Personally, Courtney wants to go to New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Courtney <laughs> wants to go hang out on Bourbon Street, but yeah. not not if I'm the Vikings. So I, I look at the other environments there, aside from Green Bay, as being unusual for the Vikings as well. It's not like they go out to San Francisco all the time. I think it was 2015 opener was the last time they went out to San Francisco. Yep. That did not go so good. And uh, New Orleans, it's not like they're making trips down there all the time. No, they kept coming up here the last the few years. I don't even remember the last time that they went down to New Orleans. It they had a preseason been... game this year. 
yeah. that doesn't count. But but in the regular yeah. season, I can't remember the last time. I'm sure someone can. Uh, maybe if Manny was here, he remembers everything. So, uh, as, but aside from that, it's an unusual environment that you have to go into. Lambo, you do every single year. Right. You've coached there. You've played there. You know what it sounds like. You know what it feels like. You know how Aaron Rodgers plays better than anybody in the entire world knows how Aaron Rodgers plays. And if we're comparing those two quarterbacks, what I saw on Sunday from Drew Brees should be terrifying to everyone. I know they lost, but he let a game winning drive essentially and yeah. just left too much time. Puts up 46 points. Like, uh, I think his thumb is OK, everyone. And the way that Michael Thomas is playing right now, like a guy who could win an MVP as a receiver. That would be the team uh, aside from San Francisco also, but that team, especially I would not want to go down there. I think the Vikings should be rooting to go to green Bay, which does sound weird, but I it think does, it's the best matchup. It? And it sounds I, very likely too. It yeah. does. And it's it, like you said, dude, you don't want to go down there in new Orleans with Michael Thomas playing or the way he is right now, like kind of possessed with drew Brees. They kind of have this mission to go out. I mean, think about it with two minutes and 19 seconds left this last game. We were all like, that's too much time, dude. You, you guys messed up, but then who would have thought we would have said with 53 seconds left, you left too much time for Jimmy G. Like this is what's showing that both of these teams can do it against really good teams. They just showed it against each other. Hey, listen, whatever you can do, I can do better. And George Kittle going down the field, 40 yards, carrying half the team. Like that should <laughs> yeah. fear a lot of people too. That's a really good team right now. They have a great defensive line. Like, Hey guys, listen, I watched this last game. I know we won. And if I hear a win forgives all sins anymore, like I know I say that, but that's like what you say when you know the game looks ugly and you're like, <laughs> Hey, just forget about it. Like there's some things up front that you're like, man, we should, we should, we should work on this. We got to talk about this stuff, guys. Uh, well, that it kind of leads into what I wanted to ask you guys yesterday. Mike Zimmer said that he feels like the best football from this team is yet to be played, which is also under the extreme cliche category. Oh, but yeah. I, I want to know if you guys think it's true after the way they played against Detroit. It was an ass whooping, even though the scoreboard wasn't as bad as it could have been if they had kept the pedal down. Uh, what do you think that means, Alex, for this team to play their best football over these last uh, three games? It's huge, dude. It's what we've been talking about. This is where you need to clean up all those little nitty gritty things. A few things showed up last week against Detroit. Some miscommunications, some safeties just running through the line. Like, dude, you can't, you cannot let a, I mean, that's a defense that's supposed to be elite because of their defensive coordinator slash head coach is an elite coach that comes from an even more elite guy. But that was not at all good. And they were just throwing guys through random gaps, and guys were coming free. When you have a really good team, those things get cleaned up. They don't look as glaring. You're not like, what? Did that just guy just run all the way through from 15 yards back? Nobody saw him? What was that? And those are the things that you got to clean up going forward. And he's right. We haven't played our best football. When this offense starts to take off, Dude, it is going to be awesome to watch. And I'm not I'm not upset. I get it. This last game, it's one of those games like, hey, listen, we have a really tough stretch ahead of us. There's this one team in front of us that shouldn't even be a problem. Let's just go out there and handle our business and get the hell out of here and get focused. And that's kind of what you saw. There's times they stall out. At times it's like, wait, what? What the hell was that? Did he just overthrow that like 10 mm -hmm. yards? Like, yeah. what, what yeah. was that? You know, and that drives you nuts as a player. Like, oh, God. well, we won, right? We're good. Let's move it along. Come on, let's go. Let's move it on to Los Angeles because this is a team coming up. That's going to be that they're going to test them. And I don't care what anyone says. You're going to the West Coast. That team will test you. And Kirk mentioned it on Sunday that he didn't feel like this team could really take a, a big step forward and kind of like, well, what does that mean? Well, it's, you know, letting your guard down against any team right now. Like you shouldn't we should be able to chalk up the, the Chargers game right now as a win. But I don't think you can, because during this final stretch in December, weird things happen. They lose the, they lose a lot of games, the Chargers, that is, in very strange fashion. Yes. Um, so just you don't get that comfortable sense. Like, I don't think anybody has that sense with the Vikings. Like, okay, yeah, put it on cruise control, Madden mode the rest of this season. Let's get to January. No. There's still a lot of vulnerability in this team. There's a lot of vulnerability on offense. Like, I walked away from that game Sunday, and I know, of course, the fan base, by and large, wants to say, yeah, bounce back win, resiliency, dominance, blah, 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 all that nonsense. I didn't – you should do that against Detroit. You right. should do that against a backup rookie and his third start, third string quarterback. Like, the fact of the matter is it was a good win, but it, it, you shouldn't celebrate it because you should beat it the crap out of a team like that. So I don't really know how I should feel because I feel like they should do the same thing to the Chargers. But at this point of the season, nothing's guaranteed, and then you're set up for your two biggest games coming down to week 16 and 17 – 
That's not a situation I think anybody wants to be in. Like, we opened up the show talking about, do you want Week 17 to matter? No team wants Week 16 or 17 to matter. You want to take care of business so you're in cruise control and you can focus on resting guys um, and be in a situation for the playoffs. But, like, with this team playing their best football yet in the month of December, how many things can truly turn around with the defense, that is? I mean, yes, we saw depth come uh, play a big factor in in the win against Detroit, but I still have a lot of question marks that I'm not exactly sure are going to get solved in the final three games of the season with that unit. Well, the answer for that, tell me if you agree with me on this, Alex, my answer for that would be that Zimmer finally acknowledged that there was an issue with Rhodes and finally did something about it, which if you're going to talk about playing your best football, playing the guy who is the second worst corner in the NFL and quarterback rating against playing him less is an improvement right there, just taking him off the field more often and maybe even giving him a chance to, to rest a little more and and be healthy at the end of the game, as healthy as he can be or fresh, as fresh as he can be at the end of the game. He ended up getting himself hurt. Yeah. Well, we'll see how, we'll see how that ends up going um, through this week. If he's even going to play, but that's another scary thing like him hurt. And then Mike Hughes, I haven't heard anything about Mike yet. And it's kind of like, wait, wait, what's going on. And then you throw on top of that. What the hell is going on with Walt Anderson's crew? I mean, they gave them more yards than that team actually earned. What was going on? Uh, uh, I did dude. lose a second half press box bet for how many flags there would be. Dude. But once the Vikings started running every play, I was like, ah, I'm not going to get to my seven and a half flags. <laughs> um, but but in terms of making the argument for you know how this team can be better, I think it starts with Zimmer making the right decision in playing my cues more often. And the other part of it, too, is, We don't know exactly when Adam Thielen is coming back, if Adam Thielen is coming back. But if he does, then you can play even better football on offense than you have been because you've just got another elite wide receiver to throw out there that you can even be more dangerous than you were. I I, I think there is an argument to say they could be better. Sure. And I mean, you have one relatively, I'm not going to word, whatever the word for not easy, but easy. You have one relatively one of those tests coming up with the Chargers. And if you can get Thielen back, if you want to stay with his cornerback rotation, which Mike Zimmer, when I asked him about that yesterday, was noncommittal. Of course, he's not going to say, yeah, we're going to play Rhodes 35 snaps and Mike Hughes 30 snaps and Holton Hill's going to come in in the second quarter. Like, there's they're still working that part out, but you can play better to specific matchups. Um, and against, you know, when you think about week 16 and you think about how you want to handle Devontae Adams, I'd start working on that game plan now because it didn't really work so well in the first half of that game in Green Bay in week two with, with Xavier Rhodes. Um, how how much different this offense can be? I mean, this is your chance to test it out for when you have to potentially go against a, a Saints defense that's playing really well against a 49ers defense that might be the best in the NFL. If you can get Adam Thielen back and incorporate, okay, what kind of offense were we without him? Now, what kind of offense can we be with him? I mean, this is the time to do it. If right. uh, How do you think he's going to mix back in, I think is is a yeah. question, Alex. Do you, do you think, I mean, you're talking Thielen? about, yeah, you're talking about a, a bunch of guys <laughs> who stepped up here, though. And, oh, and, and I agree. And who have done really well in his absence. Agreed. BC Johnson showing up big this last week. I think the young guys are coming along great, which around this time of the year, the young guys either need to show up or they're not going to show up at all. And you're seeing that with this depth and that's, what's huge. And that's, what's going to help this team in the playoffs when guys do get dinged up or nicked up. And it's like, Hey, listen, these guys have done this before. They're all veterans at this point. We are all prepared. You're not throwing a young guy out there in a playoff game. Like, Hey man, don't screw it up. All right, big dog. You got this. (laughs) He knows what he's doing. He's been there. He's ran those routes. He's already been yelled at by the quarterback. He's been yelled at by the O-line. You know, these guys have been in these huddles. They're not just super shocked. So I think that's huge. But when you throw Thielen back in, you talk about how how is that going to affect the defense? Who the hell is going to blitz you again? I mean, you officially going to have to throw away all the blitzes. Like, you're going to – all your exoticness, all this – that the defenses can really throw. Because what is it? I mean, everyone's trying to target Diggs right now and, and obviously, you know, going for Rudy. But other than that, when Thielen comes back, teams are going to be like, oh, okay – Blitz percentage just got cut in half and then cut that in half again because this team just got to full strength.